In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the locked content opt-in with Bloom. Now, what the locked content opt-in is, is an email opt-in form that acts as a paywall for some specific premium content on your website. And what it does is it requires someone to subscribe to your newsletter before they gain access to that content. And this is done using a short code. So you're gonna create this opt-in form. It's gonna give you a short code. And you're just gonna paste that short code in, in the, into the post editor and wrap it around whatever content you want to protect. And so I'm gonna give you an example of that. So here I have this blog post. And um, for argument's sake, let's say this is a very popular blog post on our blog. In fact, we have, a, we do, we have some blog posts similar to this on our blog, um, providing free icon sets uh, to visitors. And so I have this post, it's called Download Our Free Icon Set. And it's generating a ton of traffic from Google. We're getting a lot, a lot of visitors in here, which is great. It's great to have free traffic. But what if we can go a step further and try to convert that free traffic into subscribers to our email list? Well, what we can do is wrap that download button in a locked content uh, short code. And then that download button is going to be remain invisible until someone subscribes and gets past that subscribe paywall. And so that's how the locked content often works. And so as you see, I have this download button in my post and um, I want to uh, prevent people from reaching this download button until they subscribe to my newsletter. So to start off, go to your WordPress dashboard and look for the Bloom tab on the sidebar here, and then click the opt-in forms link. And this is going to give you a list of all of your active and inactive opt-ins as well as the opportunity to create a new opt-in by clicking the new opt-in button. And you can see I have several inactive opt-ins here and I've deleted all my active ones so we can start from scratch and create this new uh, locked content opt-in form. Now it's important to note that before you can create any opt-in form with Bloom, any um, working opt-in form that is, you first have to add an email marketing account, um, whether it be MailChimp or Aweber or Constant Contact or any of the 12 um, account types that Bloom supports um, because these opt-in forms need somewhere to subscribe the subscriber. It needs a list to add it to. And so there's, there's lots of pr uh, programs that will manage your list for you. And um, you first have to authorize those accounts with Bloom so that the plugin has um, permission to subscribe people to your list. So um, we have a whole tutorial that goes over how to add accounts and it goes through every single account type and the uh, authorization steps needed to link those accounts with Bloom. So you can think of Bloom as the bridge between your website and these email uh, newsletter systems. And so you can go over, over to the account uh, section here and add a new account. You can see I've already added all these accounts. And since I've added these accounts, whenever I create a new opt-in form, I can assign one of these lists to the form. And when someone subscribes, using that form, they will be added to that particular list. So once you've done that, go back to your active opt-ins page and click the new opt-in button. And here you can get a list of all the different opt-in types that Bloom supports. And in this case, we're looking for the locked content opt-in, which is right here. So we're going to click on that link. And this is going to begin the opt-in creation process. Um, there's two steps to the opt-in creation process, setup and design. And uh, during the setup process, you're just going to give your opt-in form a name. I'm just going to call it locked content. And then you're going to select your account and the list. So like I said, um, if you've created an account and um, you've created a list, it's going to show up here. So I'm going to use my Aweber account. And then it's going to give me a list of all my lists. And I'm going to select the one that I'd like to add these subscribers to. And then I'm going to move on to the next step, which is the design step. Now, whenever you create a new opt-in form, this design, the first step in the design process is to choose a starting point, which is a pre-made template. Now, what we've done is we've put a lot of work into creating a bunch of different um, great looking designs, which are really just uh, different combinations of the Bloom design settings. So these are actually all different, all forms that you could create yourself if you wanted to using the Bloom design settings. But we decided to do the hard work for you and just create a bunch of cool variations that you can kind of use uh, use uh, on their own, or you can use them as a starting point. So just kind of browse through this and look for a, a, an opt-in style that, that you like. And I'm going to choose this form right here and then move on to the next step, which is the design customization step. 
Now, Bloom comes with a ton of different design options that you can use to customize every single part of your opt-in form. And so we have a dedicated tutorial that really goes in, in depth here about all the different design settings. So be sure to check that out if you want some more information about not only what these, these design settings do, but also some tips from me about how to use these design settings effectively um, and also how to use them effectively for specific opt-in types. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to go through each of these a little bit more quickly and touch on the different design areas. So first up, we have our yeah, opt-in title and message, and this affects the content that appears within the opt-in box. So by default, it just says subscribe to our newsletter. But in this case, what we want to do is actually create a much more specific header that applies to this locked content box that is protecting a very specific resource. And so what we, what we should say is subscribe to our newsletter to download our free icon set. Next up, we have our image settings. Oh, and by the way, at any point during this design process, you can click the preview icon here and get a preview of the opt-in form that you've been designing. So you can see that it's updated with the, the new header here. And at any point during this design process, you can click that button to get an idea of what the changes you've made actually look like. So the next step is the image settings. And here you can upload your own image if you like, or, um, or choose not to have an image at all. So it's not required to have an image, but by default, we, we've created some nice images for you to use. But if you'd like to change that, that's fine. So just click the upload image link and select your own image if you'd like. And we also have image orientation options. So you can choose where that image appears within the opt-in box, whether it be to the left or the right of the text or above and below the text. So if I were to select above the text, for example, it's gonna place that image above the text here instead of to the left. But I'm gonna change it back to left. And then next up is the image loading animation. This affects the animation that occurs when the image first loads. And by default, it just kind of slides in and fades, fades in. Um, but we have a bunch of different animation options you can choose from here, um, such as this nice flip animation. And as you can see, when I load this in, it kind of flips, which is nice. It might catch your visitor's eye. And so you can choose the animation that you like. Next, we have the hide on mobile option. And what this does is when someone visits your site on a mobile device, um, it won't show the image. And this can be useful if your form is getting a little long, a little big, if you have like a lot of uh, text in it, a big message, a big header, um, well, as that opt-in box reduces in size because of the browser screen is so small um, and it reduces in width, it ends up growing in height and it can create this really long form that ends up being uh, longer than the screen of the, of the iPhone or whatever you know phone you're browsing the, the website on. And so, uh, it might become less effective when it becomes so long, it's hard to kind of under, to understand. And so you can choose to hide the image and it will give the, the text more room to breathe. Next up is the image styling or opt-in styling. And you can adjust the background color. So right now it's this red color, but I could change it to blue if I wanted or, or anything else. So here it changed to blue. And you can adjust the header font. We have a bunch of different fonts here to choose from as well as the body font. And you can adjust the text color as well. So let's say right now it's such a light text and we're, we're using light text because that light text shows up quite well on that dark blue. But if we had a white background color, for example, well, that white text isn't gonna show up very well on a white background. And so we're probably gonna wanna change this to dark text instead so that it shows up a little better like that. But I'm going to change back to light text and change our background color back to that original orange. And move on to the next setting, which is the corner style. And you can choose to have rounded or squared corners. As you can see here, if I choose rounded corners, you're going to get rounded corners on all four sides. And you can also add a border. So if you choose to add a border, whether it be a full border on all four sides or a border to any single side or any combination of sides, for example, the top or the right and the left, then you're going to get some new settings, which are border color and border style. And so you want to select your border color. Let's say I want to make it a dark gray. And I have the, the border set to all four sides, a full border. So you get this gray border on all four sides of our opt-in box. Now you could also choose to have it just on the top or just on the bottom, or the top and the bottom, which I'll try out. And you can also change the style. So we have uh, five different styles here you can choose from, a dash border, double border, 
inlaid border and also this uh, striped you know, letterhead border, which is always fun. So if we preview that, we're gonna get this striped border style on the top and the bottom, which looks nice. So moving on to form setup. Here you can choose to have um, the form itself be either on the bottom or the right or the left. And what the form is, is that gray box, which includes the, the input field and the subscribe button. So if I change this to right, it's gonna take that gray box and put it, oh sorry, the orange box and put it on the right instead of the bottom. And you can have it be on the left as well. So I'm gonna put it back to bottom. And you can also choose to collect uh, the name in addition to the email. So if you'd like to collect the people, the, your subscribers' names, you can do that by selecting this. And you can also adjust the text that appears within the placeholder text that, uh, that appears inside the input field, as well as the text that appears in the button. And finally, you can, uh, you can adjust the, the button text color to light or dark, much like we adjusted the text earlier. And you'll want to make that decision based on what color uh, you use for your button, which you can adjust in the next uh, section here, which is the form styling area. And here you can adjust, uh, adjust the form field orientation. And there's two options here. You can either have your form fields stacked on top of each other, or you can have them in line um, in a single row, which will place all, uh, all fields, the name, the email, and the button in a, a single horizontal row. Or you can have them stacked. And if we, if we preview the stacked option, you can see how the button and the input field have become 100% width and stacked on top of each other. Finally, you can adjust the form background color. So right now we have that orange, but let's say we want to do like a dark gray. Oops. And say we want to make our button color green. We could do that. And finally, we have our edge style, which is the edge that separates the form from the main opt-in area. And there's a few different edge styles we have here. We have just a uh, straight edge, or you could do the zigzag edge, which is a little more fun. You see how the zigzags, and um, or maybe something a little more minimal, such as this carrot, which is like a little arrow that points down to the form. Just depending on whatever style you have going on your website, uh, you can choose something that works for you. And again. I'm going to change this background color to be blue. I think that black was a little too strong. And so now we have this blue and this orange and this green. And if you wanted to, you could you could go back and maybe change this orange to be a little lighter. Let's take a look at that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now moving on to the last section, which is the um, the form footer text success message message and uh, custom CSS. What the footer text does is it adds a little message below the input fields, and this is useful if you want to link out to your privacy policy or uh, put some kind of like assurance uh, to your subscribers that you won't share their information or anything like that. And you can also adjust the success message, which is the message that appears after someone has successfully subscribed to your list. And finally, if you're a CSS savvy and you want to add some additional layers of customization here, you can input some custom CSS to the form. Now, this concludes the process for um, creating the locked content opt-in. There's these two steps. And the reason there's only two steps instead of three, as you might have seen with our other opt-in forms, is because instead of automatically applying this form to a specific page in your website through um, the display settings, what we're gonna do is actually just generate a short code and you can then copy and paste this short code into any post or page uh, right into the WordPress post editor and display it anywhere on your website. So if we click this generate short code, you can get a little pop up here. And you can just copy and paste this short code uh, right into the post editor. So you can copy that and save it for later or you can just, um, or you can just save and exit and uh, come back and get that short code at a later time. So, but make sure you save and exit. So I'm gonna save and exit and this is gonna add that locked content into the active options here. And like I said, you can come back at any time to get that short code if you forgot it. And you can do that by clicking this uh, short code icon here. And it's gonna remind you, hey, here's the short code you use to display the specific pop-up. And so you can copy that. And then we're gonna head over to our post where we wanted to add this opt-in. So I wanted to add it here and I wanted to uh, protect this 
download link. So I'm going to edit the post and I'm going to paste that uh, short code that I just copied and you can see it here. And this short code is a bit unique in that it has two parts. You can see it has uh, kind of an opening and a closing and this is, and you use that to wrap the content. We kind of have the word content in here to help you along and figure out what you're supposed to do. And what you want to do is just replace that word content with the content that you want to lock. And so in this case, see we have these two parts of the opt-in and I want to wrap that around my button, which is right here. And so if I wrap this link with this opt-in, then it's going to be protected. So I'm going to update and then take a look at the post and see what we have. And we scroll down, see that button is gone now and it says subscribe to our newsletter to download our free icon set. And if we were to subscribe here, then we would get access to that button and we could download. Now, one more thing about short codes is that I'm going to delete the short code I pasted earlier. You can actually access these short codes at any time whenever you're in the WordPress post editor by going over to the visual tab here and looking for the bloom icon. And if you click this, you can see two options, locked content and inline opt-in. And you can hover over each of these and you can get a list of all the different um, active op opt-ins for that type that you have. And you can see this locked content opt-in that we created. And if you click that, it's going to add um, the short code right to your post. And you can use that to protect your content. In fact, so all you got to do is, in this case, scroll down to the button, uh, highlight it, and then select locked content, and it's going to lock that button for you. And like, and um, th there's lots of creative ways you can use this locked content. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, locking a button. You could be locking a, a whole a whole post, or maybe you just want to like, maybe you've created this great free resource, and you know the visitors get access to the first half, maybe that's like a series of lessons perhaps, and they get access to the first couple lessons, but to get access to the, the second few lessons, they have to subscribe. And so you could, in that case, lock the whole post. Yeah, so that's a basic overview of using the locked content opt-in form in Bloom.